What's going on, warriors? Today, I've got a topic. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one. Uh, we're gonna go over dating and diabetes. Now, as you probably know, I am married, and uh, my wife and I chat about diabetes a lot. But we're gonna dive a little bit deeper, a little bit beyond being married and into my dating life before I even knew my wife and uh, discuss what that was like with me having diabetes, right? And uh, towards the end, I'm also gonna get into my five tips for enjoying a healthy and happy relationship with type 1 diabetes. So without any further ado, let's get into the theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandervecht, and with my co-host Ali Abdul Karim, we welcome you to Pardon My Pancreas. Alright guys, so today we're chatting about dating and diabetes. We got Valentine's Day coming up in just a couple of days, right? I'm sure many of you, this is a topic that's on your mind. Do I tell them about my diabetes? Do I explain what type 1 diabetes is? Do I let them continue believing that type 1 and type 2 are the same thing? Do I explain the dangers of type 1 or what I actually have to do? Do I show them needles and inject? There's so many questions that flood our minds, right? It's a complicated topic, having to deal with a new relationship or even an existing relationship, what does that look like? What should it look like? And how can you best navigate those waters? So back in the day, before I met my wife, right, I was dating other girls and looking around for that potential wife before I knew who I was going to marry. And uh, it was an interesting road to navigate with diabetes. Now I had had one relationship before I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and uh, looking into how that was going to change after I was diagnosed was very interesting. Now, when I was first diagnosed, um, the, the few girls that I dated after my diagnosis were already kind of in my social circle. You know, they knew a friend of a friend or a friend of a friend of a friend, right? And because of that, they were vaguely aware of my diabetes or at least of the fact that I took insulin or something was different, right? And so for them, it wasn't as much of a, do I tell them? It was more of a, how much do I tell them? Right? Do I tell them about the dangers of Lowe's or the complications that could be in my future or, you know, I might pass this on to our children someday. Like, whoa, 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 this is the beginning of a relationship. Calm down, man. <laughs> so in the beginning, right, and I should clarify as well, those of you who know my story, when I was first diagnosed, I did not take care of myself at all, right? I was on injections and I did take my insulin most of the time. There were plenty of times where I didn't. I, I snacked, right? Uh, but because of that, it was not as much of a priority or even a thought of mine to tell the people that I was dating that I had type 1 diabetes. Because I was like, you know what? It's not really a big factor in my life. Why should they know about it? Especially if this is a new relationship. And so what it boiled down to was length of relationship. So if it's on the first date, let's say, there is no way I was going to tell them that I had diabetes because I barely even took care of it myself. I'd maybe go off to the bathroom to inject if I had to and uh, come back, pretend it's all cool, maybe wait until they weren't looking and I would inject. Uh, and it, it was a little mixture of being embarrassed, just in general, of having type 1 at that point in my life, but also just not wanting to have to explain it, not wanting the rest of the date to be about type 1 diabetes. That wasn't going to be a fun topic. Hey, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I have diabetes and let's talk about that for two hours. No, I didn't want to deal with that. So ultimately, if it was in the you know intro, let's say one, two, three first dates, that wasn't really a time for me to share my diabetes unless it came up naturally, i.e. if they saw me injecting, they're like, whoa, what's going on? Which that did actually happen once. Um, they were very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> seeing me pull out a needle and inject myself and they're like what hold on that is, is that what I think it is wait a second and I was like no nah, it's I have type 1 diabetes right and that's where that conversation comes up sometimes naturally sometimes you forget about what you have and the conversation arises naturally but as the relationship furthered that is when I would purposefully start to bring this up, right? And over the course of having a few different relationships that I dated girls, right, trying to find that potential marriage partner, um, there were a few times where I did have to bring it up and, you know, 
kind of halt the conversation and say, hey, just so you know, uh, there's something I think is important that I, I bring up before, you know, things are getting a little more serious and labels might start showing up of boyfriend and girlfriend. And I think it's important that you know, and in their head, there's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Did he cheat? Is he, did he murder somebody? Is he like some alien? <laughs> I don't know. But then you're like, okay, I have to tell you, I have type one diabetes. And I mean, all of my experiences, honestly, have just been, oh, you know, they're a little bit taken aback, like, huh, they ponder it for a second, and okay, well, what does that mean? What does that look like? And they don't know, right? They haven't been educated on it like you have, and, and like I have. So the following conversation oftentimes is one of education. Explain to them high, le high blood sugars, low blood sugars, I have to take insulin for food that I eat, uh, you know, Depends on how deep you want to go as well. I would not recommend diving off the deep end the first time you tell them about diabetes. Maybe just let them know, hey, if I start acting like I'm drunk, there's a good chance I need sugar. And like, okay. And that's usually where I left it at. You know, I say, hey, I have to take uh, insulin shots when I eat food. And if I start acting kind of crazy and I'm having a hard time talking, just give me some sugar and I'll be fine. Don't scare them off. There's no need to tell them the entire history of type 1 diabetes and when insulin was invented and how, you know, the future and the cure is never going to happen, but you hope it does and all this stuff. Don't overwhelm them, right? But if you see this as a potential long-term relationship, they need to know. It is extremely important that you let them know because, uh, let's face it, type 1 diabetes is not going anywhere. And here's the, the question I get a lot is within type 1 diabetes and dating, do you tell them and how does that conversation go? And first I think, do I tell them? If it's a significant relationship where we're putting labels on boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe even a fiance or a spouse, and people are wondering if they should tell them, oh boy, if you are worried about losing them because of type one diabetes, you probably shouldn't be with them in the first place. If someone is going to leave you because of your type one diabetes, that is not someone you want to spend the rest of your life with. Because guess what? Type 1 diabetes is not going anywhere. It will be with you. It will be a fairly significant part of your life for the rest of your life. You're going to have medical expenses. You are higher risk for certain things. Uh, they're going to have to be aware of that when planning. Vacations, right? Your suitcase is going to be full of diabetes supplies. <laughs> There's a lot of different things that come into play as a result of type 1 diabetes. And so if they're not cool with that, if they're not accepting of the fact that you have a lifelong disease, kick them to the curb. Forget it. They were not meant for you in the first place. You're better than that and you deserve better than that. You do not deserve to be judged based on your type 1 diabetes. That's not you. It's part of you, but that's not all of you. And if they're going to leave based on that, get rid of them. Trust me, you are better off without them. My wife, amazing person. She deals with my diabetes like no other. She is so supportive. And I want you to know there is someone out there like that for you. If, you, if you're currently in a relationship where someone is just getting frustrated about your diabetes and hates your Dexcom alarms and tells you that you're draining them of their energy because of your diabetes, like that's not someone you want to be around, right? Sure, there are moments where my wife is like, oh my gosh, fix your blood sugars, right? But nine times out of 10, She's amazing, she's supportive, she gets that I have a slightly different life because of my type 1 diabetes, right? All right, so overall, if it's a short-term relationship, it's the first date, it's the second date, it's the third date, probably don't worry about telling them about you have type 1 diabetes, right? About, you have, about the fact that you have type 1 diabetes. But, I mean, if it comes up too, if you're at the table and you have to inject, you should probably tell them instead of just letting them watch you inject some mysterious liquid into your body. <laughs> but in a long-term relationship, or if you see potential for a long-term relationship, that's where I would bring it up, purposefully and intentionally. Let them know, hey, life's a little bit different for me. You might see me injecting insulin, you might see my insulin pump, right? And by the way, if you're on a pump, it's probably going to come up on the first date unless you hide it really well, because <laughs> pumps are pretty obvious, right? Uh, I guess Omnipod's not as obvious, but... It's a different story. So longer term relationships, or if there's potential for a longer term relationship, that's typically where I would intentionally bring it up, ease them into it, right? Don't tell them every single thing about type one. Don't just go nuts on them and, you know, give them a whole lecture an hour long about everything diabetes. They'll get there eventually, but letting them know that you do have type one diabetes and then letting them ask questions. 
I find that's the best way to do it. I have type 1 diabetes, I need insulin, and uh, if I go into a low blood sugar, here's what that might look like, and I just need sugar. And then let them come at you with any questions they might have, questions, concerns, anything like that. So uh, if they are not going to stick with you because of type 1 diabetes, it's not someone you want to be with. Trust me on that. And, uh, you know, there's someone better out there for you. Now, I want to go over five little tips that I have for healthy and happy relationships while living with type 1 diabetes. And the first one I want to talk about is setting boundaries and having good communication. So boundaries, once they know about your diabetes, what are some boundaries we can have? Now, some simple examples are, hey, don't ask me about my blood sugars, right? Some people really don't like talking about it. Or some people say, I wish you would ask me more about my blood sugars, right? Uh, but we don't want to overstep any boundaries. We don't want them to overstep boundaries. So if you hate the idea of a helicopter spouse always being like, hey, how are your blood sugars? Hey, did you treat the low? Hey, and they're texting you on your phone because they're following you on your Dexcom app. Hey, you have a high blood sugar. You should take some insulin. You'd be like, whoa, <laughs> step back. I need you to respect the boundary that we set where you're not going to be a helicopter boyfriend, helicopter girlfriend, and just let me live my life. I know what I'm doing, right? So figure out what boundaries work best for you, communicate them in a loving manner, but understand that we're all a little bit different. Some people like that communication of, hey, how are your blood sugars doing? You're a little bit low, do you want me to get you a snack? Versus some people are like, dude, just don't even talk about my blood sugars. I deal with them, I know what to do, I'll be fine, right? Find your boundaries, communicate them in a loving manner, and then uh, hopefully you guys can develop a respectful communication pattern between those. Now, second, education. Now, while I said you ease them into it, right? Let them know I take insulin, I might need sugar sometimes. Eventually, they do need to be educated on what's really going on, especially about the emergency situations. Talk about DKA. They should know the realities of diabetic complications, of the risks with low blood sugars, right? The high blood sugar risk, all the different types of things that are realities in our lives if we don't take care of ourselves. And they need to know how to help with that. So know that insulin brings blood sugars down, sugar brings blood sugars up. How does a glucagon pen work? How do the new glucagons work, right? We have the nasal glucagon, we have uh, the pre-mixed solutions, there's all sorts of new stuff coming out. And you don't have to teach them everything, but they need to know the basics of how to help you if there were an emergency situation. Understand that if your pump's beeping at you, that maybe they can show you love by bringing you some sugar because you're low, right? So. Help them understand how to help you. Educate them in a loving manner. Now, the third tip I wanna talk about is balance. So we talked about educating them and finding those boundaries, but you gotta find the balance. And this is, uh, this is one that plays on both sides, right? Where it's, do you want them to ask you if you need sugar? For example, my wife, if she sees that I've been low for a significant amount of time, she will come upstairs and find me and say, Matt, do you want me to get you a juice box? And I just feel so loved knowing that she's offering that. Do I take her up on it? No. Nine times out of 10, I've already taken care of it. I've figured it out. I know what to do, right? But her offering to bring me a juice box, that shows me so much love. So our relationship, I appreciate that when she offers. Now, if she came every single time and said, Matt, you need sugar, take some sugar right now. If, if that happened every time I was low, that would drive me insane. And so we discussed that we found the balance right? Some people just have no need for assistance, while others prefer to have the, the love and assistance of their spouse or their boyfriend, girlfriend all the time. So find a balancing point for both of you that works. In other words, if I wanted her to come and tell me, you know, eat your sugar all the time, but then to her, she's like, I don't want to micromanage your life. I'm not going to do that. We should probably find a balancing point between the two, which is essentially what we're at. I mean, that's not what we we weren't coming at that from two different oppo opposing sides, but that would technically be the balancing point is, hey, if you're low for a long time, I'm going to come offer you sugar, right? So find a balancing point within that realm that you can both agree upon, and uh, it's going to help you guys live happily with this type 1 diabetes aspect in your life. All right, now this one is actually pretty important that I think a lot of people think they know, but they don't truly act it out. Uh, number four is that diabetes should not hold you back from anything, whether that's getting romantically involved, whether it's going on a trip for the weekend, whether that's going out to eat, uh, whether that's going for a hike, it should not hold you back from anything, but it does require some extra planning. So letting them know, 
hey, it would, it would really be helpful if you gave me a little bit of warning before you want to go for a run right after we eat food so that I can adjust my pre-bolus timing, right? Um, when we go on vacation, I'm gonna need a little bit of extra suitcase space to stuff all my diabetes supplies in, right? So there's, there's really no excuse to be held back because of your type 1 diabetes, but both of you need to understand there's a little bit more planning that goes into it. Now, step number five, a little bit different, a little bit outside of the box, but I wanna put this in there. This one's on you as the type one diabetic. If you can control your blood sugars and keep them in range a bit more automated, right? Then you have the opportunity to focus more in the moment. Whether it's this Valentine's Day coming up and focusing on the person that you're, whether you're in love with or you like like them, right? <laughs> but whatever it is, being able to live in the moment because diabetes isn't pulling you away with these messed up blood sugars. If your blood sugars are cruising in range and doing great things, then you can go do great things. You can live in the moment, enjoy the experience, spend time with the people you care about without having to worry about stepping away and getting sugar or taking extra insulin and wondering if that's going to drop you too low or whatever's going on. The more in control you are, inevitably will give you less of a headache with your diabetes. Does that make sense? The more you can automate your blood sugars, the less of a mental toll your diabetes will have on your life. Now, if you're looking for a place to automate your blood sugars, learn about how to keep them in range and ultimately reduce the stress on you and improve your quality of life, we have a number of programs and resources for you at ftfwarrior.com. Go over there, search around, you're gonna find some great stuff. Tools, resources, community, all of which are created for type one diabetics by a type one diabetic. Now, there's one last thing. Here's your, uh, your homework today. We have a video that I'm putting out with my wife. We're gonna do a Q and A for Valentine's Day. We're gonna do a whole little series, little mini series with your questions. And I need you, if you're watching on YouTube, comment below with any questions you have surrounding dating and diabetes or relationships or how that dynamic works between a diabetic and a non-diabetic, right? And if you are listening on the podcast, go over to YouTube. First of all, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel because it's awesome. And add the comments below. Search this video or just search FTF Warrior. Go find it. Comment on this video. Let me know what you guys want answered. And we're going to do that whole Q&A together, my wife and I, and uh, answer your most burning questions. Now, of course, there is a separate aspect that we do not have. I do not have knowledge on this. And that is a diabetic dating a diabetic. And people say, would you rather have dated a diabetic? And I say, you know what? It would make the initial conversation easier, but diabetes does not change or define who we are as people. So ultimately, in my mind, it does not matter. Whether they're diabetic, whether they have, they have Crohn's disease like my wife does, whether they have nothing going on and they're just A-OK -okay and everything's great with their health, doesn't matter. Whoever you fall in love with, that's your person, right? You accept whatever's going on in their life and you do what you can to help and support them because you love them. And that's how it should always be. So, before you forget, add your comments below in this video. If you're listening, go find the video on YouTube. Search FTF Warrior. This one's gonna be called probably like dating with diabetes or something. And uh, I will look at your questions. We will answer them in a few days. This is going live before Valentine's Day. So make sure you add your questions in. Make sure you subscribe. It's gonna pop up in this corner if you're watching the video. Subscribe so that we can show you that video. I will see you guys in the next episode. Have an amazing day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel right there if you're watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Keep up the fight.